Hello and welcome to another one of our occasional How It Works series. Uh, we've got uh, Mr. Yoad Nevo there in Nevo Sound, who if you've been following Sonic Talk, you'll know that he's recently installed a Dolby Atmos system for mixing. And now, why is this relevant? It's not just for cinema. Lots of pop music and lots of kind of uh, old masters are also being re-sort re of imagined and remixed into this new format because this new surround sound has been adopted by Apple uh, with uh, spatial audio and various other aspects that you can listen to it in so we thought we'd get together with you and just sort of have an understanding of how the system works and why it works and what the whole kind of principle is how are you Yoad? are you well yeah i'm doing very well thanks Good, excellent. Well, first of all, we're, this is a quite a complicated setup because we've essentially we're looking at his uh, Logic session, which includes Logic plus the Dolby Atmos renderer. As far as I understand it, as well as having a kind of multiple speaker system that you've had to put in your studio, you've also got to have this kind of encoding and decoding so you can hear the every single point because it's not just a regular surround system, is it? It's got a lot more components to it, right? The whole idea, the whole thing uh, is that it really opens a lot of new possibilities, uh, not only in the mix, but also in the production. Because when you approach um, a new production of, of a song, and I'm specifically talking about music production, because we all know there will be Atmos for cinema uh, and um, sound and all that. But in the studio, um, you suddenly, instead of having to pack everything into two speakers, you suddenly have 12 speakers, which allows you, you know, a lot of headroom and a lot of creativity. Uh, it's quite sophisticated, but once you, you know, once you, you, you get it, it's, it's really not. Um, the way I like to, to look at <clears throat> the Dolby Atmos renderer is basically like a mixer. Uh, a mixer that can record, but um, basically we have our inputs, we have 128 inputs, and we have 128 outputs. Um, we are getting the audio from uh, our DAW, in this case Logic, um, and through, through a virtual driver. So here I have the Dolby Audio Bridge. As far as Logic is concerned, it's an audio or like a sound card, but it actually roots the sound internally into the Dolby renderer. And these are our inputs. Um, the nice thing about Dolby is instead of um, having 128 inputs going to 128 outputs, uh, which will require 128 speakers in the room, it enables you to, to monitor its, its mixed um, information into a different uh, available setups. So in this case, I'm, my outputs are, 12, are going to 12 speakers, which are configured in a 7.1.4 configuration. What it means is that I have my left, center, right, and all the normal um, X, Y, um, channels or speakers and then I have my top speakers which are actually here above me and I have the LFE which is a subwoofer which I have here just under the the center speaker um, and I can listen to the mix all the 128 available outputs if I've used them or however many I've used um, through different configurations. So I can now do 7.1.4, and that will basically um, be compatible with um, systems which don't have the elevation uh, elements. Uh, and what it will do, it will fold down the information because we, we used to have four speakers here, uh, and it will fold or mix down this information and have them uh, through a matrix to uh, of different width and uh, an imaging to kind of give the sort of um, 
all the information that we had in the original mix, but spread across an X Y plan. But with all all of those outputs, I mean, surely there's like interpolation going on, isn't there? Because you haven't got 128 speakers. Is the Atmos part the bit that kind of figures out what the points are in between those speaker points, or how does that work? Um, yeah. So the system is based on the concept of having a sound bed. So these are our left right, center, sub, sides, and back speakers, which are basically static. So you can't change the positioning of those elements. So that, that means that one is hardwired to the left front speaker, two to the right front speaker, and so on. Um, and however, I can move objects in space uh, let's try to look at something from the mix here. Yeah, this guitar, for instance. So this guitar has the Dolby Atmos Panner plugin inserted. And, th and what it does is, you, it's actually easier to, to see. So it's playing to outputs... 33 and 34 which I can see here so now you can see that these outputs these mixer inputs are active and that's the object these are that's object 30 one of them is 33 and one of them is 34 and I can move them in space with the, the panner so the panner basically only all it does is sending so it's sending metadata information into the Dolby Atmos mixer or renderer. And, ah. and the movements I make here will uh, affect um, the panning or the positioning in space, including um, height of these elements. Right. Um, so so I, can, um, I can... What I can do is is basically set up the height and set up the the positioning so now it will be moving on the ceiling if you like yeah i, I kind of get we actually we should point out what we're listening to here obviously you can't hear this in full so you know full uh, 7.1.4 glory the, the the other thing about the Atmos system, which is very important, is it it kind of it's downward compatible, so you can get down to a stereo mix, which is kind of binaural, which is what as your as listeners you're hearing. Is that have I got that about right? Yeah, I mean the the, the nice thing is that the Dolby I can I can record this information now, um, and I will record the entire session, so everything that's happening in the inputs. Uh, and all the objects moving around and all that can be recorded basically as is. So that means that the information, it's like a, a recorder of up to 128 tracks of audio. So it basically right. creates 128 WAV files. Each WAV file contains the metadata information required to move those uh, objects around. So on... Uh, are 33 and 34 these are the two WAVs that will get recorded ah, okay. alongside uh, the information so the, essentially when you do a mix down in atmos you're creating a kind of big file that's got all of the output data all of the movement that's happening in there and that's that's the the atmos system is what encodes and decodes that on playback right yeah, uh, the beauty of it is that I don't send a mix down. What I can do is when I need to deliver the finished product, I can just send this session or I can export uh, a Dolby uh, Master um, from this session in any configuration of speakers. So uh, the, whoever gets the, the recipient of this, uh, of this session will get the full session um, and they can choose to listen to it in different environments uh, according to, to the speaker setup that they would have. But it will still re-render um, the information to the appropriate listening environment, including stereo. Actually, I would like to, to start 
by playing a bit of of this mix that that I did uh the mix is is something uh that I did for born born stranger it's an album that I produced for them a few couple of a few years ago uh this is a stem mix so after the mix I opened the stems and did some more tweaking and stuff and this is the basis of of this uh Dolby Atmos mix meaning to say that in order to simplify things I don't I didn't use the entire mix with all the plugins and stuff but after I finished the stereo mix I bounced all the tracks or exported all the tracks to stems to individual stems including right. reverb reta, reta, reverb returns and uh, and stuff like that um to to just keep the session uh simple And without too many plugins and subgroups and things like that, so so uh, I can concentrate only on the on the atmos mix in in the same way that we that we can fold down the mix into less speakers or less elements that are being mixed, uh, we can also send it to a binaural encoder, and right. what that will do is that it will try to emulate the Kind of immersive sensation of of our content uh into two ears like to two basically headphones let's let's play like a verse and a chorus from from that song. What's interesting about that in the renderer you've got this kind of really strong visual representation of what's actually going on with those uh moves and the kind of spatial side which must be real because i conceptually it's it's a real hard nut to crack i'd imagine in terms of how to operate and make a mix um it could be you have to know what you're doing uh which always helps uh but what what i can show here is when when we talked about the the bed Kind of channels here you can see that the the chorus is playing full blast uh, and all we see here are basically the extra objects that I'm using statically for the top speakers and the vocal which is basically playing to the center speaker. Now here we have some objects that are dynamic and moving around but what I'm using as as the sound bed are basically are uh, my um, eight inputs so it's like almost like normal surround and uh, uh, the renderer at the moment provides only nine and ten for the elevation speakers but I have so it's like uh, addressed to 7.1.2. But since I have 7.1.4, I have four speakers on the ceilings. Mm. On the ceiling, I would like to utilize them. So I choose objects 11 and 12. Uh, so everything I want to say, anything I want to send to the top left and right speakers will be sent to 11 and 12, respectively. And the same for the top uh, back speakers. So that will be 13 and 14. Um, so... These are just static objects that, that I use and and uh, the rest of them I can move um, really uh, in in space right uh, which, which is which is very creative I mean uh, and as with ev- any new format that that could be 
you know, that could lead to really cool results or a big mess. For instance, you don't want stuff to come and fly about and stuff to, to make you look to look the speaker. Behind, you yeah. want it to, 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 to be like a, an experience, an immersive experience. So you have to emulate a few things that happen in real world in terms of uh, 3D audio. So, so here, this is, a, this is a template of a session that I have uh, with loads of reverbs and uh, reverb returns uh, on nine auxiliaries, which I can pick and choose what to import to my, <clears throat> to my current mix. So that's just the drum loop. Um, and now I can send it to a reverb. And this reverb is actually a surround reverb which uh, and I'm using basically six in this case five because I don't need to reverb the center channel and I know I don't need reverb on the sub on the LFE channel so I'm using five inst five stereo instances of Valhalla in this case um, and each one is set up a little bit differently and the, the main difference is the pre-delay so the so I get more pre-delay on the top speakers, on the back speakers, um, and I set it up in the way that I have an insert that can send to all of them in one go. So if I need to view just the reverb, or, or what is very common is to have, uh, especially on vocal reverbs, is to have a de on the send. So in, you know, in order to avoid having um, five of those and tweak each one individually, I can um, have it on the b auxiliary return, but bus sent to the, to the right. reverbs, if it makes sense. And, uh, and here I have quite a few. I think that this one is the AMS, the RMX 16, which I really love, the, the ambient program. Um, and this is playing on uh, Space Designer, and here you can see again that the pre delay. So you create a sense different. of, yeah, so, so you have to know a little bit about psychoacoustics effectively and how that works and what the kind of principles are behind it. In, or, uh, in order for stuff to sound realistic, uh, it, it definitely helps, but if you're just looking for uh, being creative, then uh, then you can do whatever whatever you want um, it's a bit of a wild west at the moment so uh, because it's a new format for music um, i've been working in surround for for over 20 years and we did the waves 360 bundle uh, quite a few years ago um, so i'm very much aware of the considerations of the considerations to take when when mixing in dolby uh, and in surround in particular, they're, they're, they, they vary, they're not the same because um, in a normal 5.1 or 7.1, let's say 5.1 that was meant to for home entertainment system, then you would have your back speakers, your rear speakers where your sofa is and the front speakers would be at the other end of the living room where the screen is. So if you put like a shaker or anything percussive or with a lot of transients in the back speakers, you would hear it before the actual drums coming from the left and right. So you would have some uh, right. sync mismatch. And, uh, and so the, there were a lot of rules that, the, that addressed that. Uh, with Dolby Atmos, it's meant to be listened to in a very sort of accurate and uh, standard design or standard environment so right. you can actually put put the drums on this speaker you can put the kick here the hi-hat here and whatever else you want anywhere and it will si still sound coherent because you're meant to to listen to it in in a very controlled environment or you you mix it down to another format which is uh, which and then in this format it will also kind of make sense um and and of course binaural because ninety nine percent of music is being listened to on on headphones yeah. so so that's really the big thing um, 
and uh, I'm aware of, of the fact that that a lot of of, of my mixes, are, I mean, will will be uh, listened Listen, to yeah, on headphones. On so so there is there is an advantage. I mean, because like you know that's the thing. So uh, you get somebody with a big company like Apple behind it, and they're making you know spatial audio compatible stuff and everybody's kind of going getting getting excited about it i mean that has the opportunity to change the way that mixes are built because i mean presume i, I always struggle with stereo imaging and fitting stuff in but be, the fact that you can move things around even in binaural does it give you that sort of additional sort of tools to be able to make a mix sound a little bit more room and more headroom in it yeah i mean physically binaural is still two speakers two tiny speaker two tiny headphone speakers so you'll have more more difficulty there uh, but in the environment that you're creating in whether it's mixing or producing you can really feel um you can really feel the headroom because instead of of two speakers you have 12 so you can um, split the load or the mm. even the, the acoustic load on the element of each speaker driver um, you can you can just reduce it and that opens up so many things not to mention the fact that you want your vocal your, your lead vocal just there and the reverb kind of you know I even in this on this track I don't know if I can find it um, there's some elements that I pan I think it's this one this long clap that I pan sort of, let's see. Um, yeah, so whenever that happens. So it's going from, basically, it's going from, from the front top speakers to, so the reverb kind of goes like that, you know, so you can create things without getting too uh, mad that will st still make sense. Or for instance, I have this, um, where is this? I have done some, oh yeah, the, the, these kind of uh, trancey synths in the chorus. So these ones actually go to the side speakers. This one goes to the main speakers to the left and right. I say these because they are stereo. What else have I got here? But it's, it's two mono ones, so that's right. how it should. So they, go, they ah. both go to the sub and to the, the front left and right, and then I have these ones um, that go to the, to the back. So altogether you have quite a hefty uh, kind of synth sound. Um, usually, when you, you know when you when you record synths, um, you can double them and all that. But eventually, it sounds very messy. And here, I don't know how it comes across on the binaural streaming that you're listening to. Um, but here, it sounds it's really engulfing, and uh, and and also, yeah, I use a common reverb on those synths so uh and and which is uh like a surround reverb like the one i showed right uh earlier yeah yeah so so i'm using so i'm using the ah these are objects um so i can uh, they see do them sound very the, that there's a, there's a lot of spatial information in there that i can't quite put my finger on i'm in hearing it binaural and i i confess i'm not used to what binaural sounds like but it's different <laughs> i can say that much it, it 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 is different and um the thing is you have to be very kind of positive and wanting to get the experience in order to get it um uh because if if i solo just one element and pan it around you it, you will get it you'll get the sensation here in the room in the binaural um the what you'll hear through through your headphones will be basically a bunch of a bunch of hrtf uh, filters um uh, and delays and uh, reflections that are meant to emulate what we hear in the spatial, uh, right. spatially. 
Uh, but, you know, this is, this, this, it's still kind of early days because to get the, the, the elevation effect on headphones is really, even, even the, difficult, you yeah. know, sounds coming from behind, it's quite, it's quite complicated and it does, since you have to, to, to use early reflections, whether IR or algorithmic, um, it will color the sound because even if I play just the kick, or one of the kicks, I think there are a few here, you can, um, you can hear some sort of a room on it. Yeah. Uh, in the binaural uh, stream. I'm not hearing it. I'm not getting it here because in theory, I should be getting it from my room and my... And, and my ears and my skull and the whole kind of construction of, of the space and, uh, and my ah, head. So the, uh, the, the Atmos in decoding or encoding thing is emulating that with impulse responses, with time and with filtering to kind of give you the sense of that in, in two channel. Absolutely. That's, that's what it does. There are different algorithms uh, or different methods of, of, uh, of rendering um, that information and you know the the different flavors if you like or different grades of uh, of binaural uh, encoding uh the dolby one i wouldn't say is the best one it's kind of effective what i use it for is i'm listening to the mix in 7.1.4 but i'm very interested in knowing how this mix will sound on headphones because like right. we said you know a lot most a people, people most humanity most of humanity uh, are using uh, headphones to to listen to the music to the music um if i wanted to use a diff a, a, a better decoder a better encoder than the built-in dolby one what i could do is i can send a, a 7.1 mix so here i have a 7.1 kind of down mix of of my mix i can i of of the full mix let's say mm -hmm. and i can send it to different outputs and i can put waves nx on these outputs and i will get a better result um when i when i submit mixes i sometimes uh do that uh so so people can can a b and choose right. which one they want to use for for streaming um, it's. I mean, it sounds insanely complicated. I mean, how would somebody who perhaps didn't have a full Atmos system installed, is it possible to mix to a degree using Atmos with a pair of headphones and a laptop and a sort of decent set, or, uh, audio converter? Can you get start out doing that? I mean, what's the sort of barrier to entry, really? Um, I would say that it will be, it will become easier and easier and more and more kind of possible to do right now you still have to to have a system and uh, and it's just not it, not just hanging a bunch of speakers on the walls and ceilings on and ceiling you have to to you know you have to calibrate, calibrate the yeah. room you have to to line up the the, the speaker uh, frequency timing uh, angles um and uh, yeah it, you have to know this is a control this is why it's called the control room you you need to control your program what what you're recording or mixing or whatever you have to do it in a very accurate way so it will translate well to different uh, to right. different formats interesting so do you do you think your mixes have improved or you hear more in this system than you would in your straight, you know, because you've got a lovely set of ATCs there, which I think your mix is sound fantastic on. But now having this ability to explode it out so much, do you find that you're kind of going, wow, that's improving the quality of your mixes generally? I mean, or is it just different? Uh, it's different. And like I said, in at this point in time, I'm not using, you can see there's not much there's not much uh, processing on 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 stuff just mainly routing things to different outputs and adding some 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 reverbs and and things like that where where is the original mix had like i don't know how many hundreds of of plugins uh, so i don't want to be dealing with this while um, right, yeah. you know 
<clears throat> so that's why I use uh, I use the stems from the original mix um, to do the Dolby Atmos mix. And still, even on that, I had to, as you can see, I did uh, some stuff and I added some a sub bass. Um, and and things like that. Um, it's sort of different creative just, process, effectively. Yeah, but this song wasn't produced in Dolby Atmos, and things that are produced in Dolby Atmos are, are much more interesting because then you have the freedom. This is still a traditional mix, um, which is not a bad thing because uh, you, you remember the whole fuss about uh, the Beatles and Pink Floyd albums uh, remixed and remastered and all that with, for CD, for C uh, whether it's better or not, or it loses something. So <clears throat> it, at the moment, it, um, it allows me to maintain the vibe of the original mix, right. um, so it's compatible to both uh, with both. Um, platforms uh but i think that producing music in dolby atmos is still in its early days right yeah thank you so much this is i mean it's a, it's a world that i think many people will uh, be fascinated to have a look inside and it sounds like you know like you say it's very much in its infancy but we're going to see more as as technology allows us to get more of a surround experience from less as well this is going to really open up i'd imagine yeah, I think it will really take off once we uh, have the tools to to make it sound or to actually mix for binaural in a binaural listening environment. That will open it up to the you know to to a wider range of uh, of mix engineers and producers and bedroom producers or what have you, and we will have uh, a lot of content in in this format or other format like this we which i haven't mentioned um uh, um you know which are based on multi-channel kind of mm. immersive experience excellent well yeah thank you ever so much for your time i know this has been a bit of a leg we've like i said this was quite a technical setup and a challenge because we have to run multiple computers to get screen and audio and stuff but uh thank you for hanging in there and uh, bringing us this extra information it's been much appreciated cool i enjoyed it Take my hand. 